Hey guys, welcome back to the Mind of Brandon and welcome back to another Tuesday Tangent. As indicated by the title of this video, I'm going to be clarifying my political perspectives. So uh, the inspiration for today's video is some comments that were left on another video of mine titled Trump Supporters, When Was America Great? Uh, so th there was this individual commenting on that video who basically assumed I was all like, you know, yeah, Democratic Party, Obama, Hillary, or, you know, something like that, right? <laughs> uh, so, you know, I, I let him know eh, that's, that's not really the case. And he basically uh, asked for further clarification of uh, my, you know, my political perspectives. Uh, I, I, I guess I'll just go ahead and show you the, the comment that I'm responding to. <laughs> my apologies for assuming that you bought into the political rhetoric being put out there by the Democratic Party. There are so many protesting against Trump like it's going to do something. Each person who affiliates themselves with a particular party seems to remain willfully ignorant of their own party's shortcomings while openly blaming their counterparts for the woes of the world. This seems to be deliberately designed to keep us as Americans divided, which keeps us from questioning the whole system in general and keeps most from seeing the truth. The truth I'm referring to is that both parties are just different wings of the same bird. So instead of questioning Trump supporters about his campaign slogan, I feel the more productive question which you could have posed would have been, how do we fix our inherently flawed political system? Do you agree? Or are you under the impression that there is no commonality between the two and that our two-party system will eventually lead us to a better way of life? Forgive me if I once again cause you confusion, but I'm just trying to figure out what the driving force is behind you asking such a question so that I may ascertain where you stand in regards to your political beliefs, because in my opinion, your initial question appears to be a baited one that you seem to pose to elicit a certain response in order to prove the validity of whatever preconceived notions you may have about our political system or the candidates therein. Is this not accurate? If it is, then what point are you trying to make? Just curious. So the individual who left this comment actually seems to be pretty well enlightened to the fact that the current political system may actually be a total, complete, and utter sham, right? Or, or, or at least not as effective as it could be, right? Uh, it's not that there's literally no difference from one president to the next. Uh, it's just that, you know, when we look at the big picture, you know, regardless of who the most recent president was, you know, anytime we switch from one president to the next, none of the world's problems have been solved. There's still war, crime, poverty, starvation, slavery, overpopulation, pollution, racism, sexism, nationalism, classism, ageism. Presidents are doing more to contribute to and perpetuate these problems than they are doing to solve them. That being said, some of the other people who realized what a total utter sham our political system is decided that there's something special about Donald Trump, something different about him. He's not as PC as the other candidates. He's got more balls. And now that he's president, we've gotten to see what he's doing with those balls. Uh, one of the first things he did when he got into the Oval Office is he signed the go-ahead on the Dakota Access Pipeline, which of course is not going to be good for the environment. Uh, he, is, he of course has cut funding to programs that combat climate change. He has actually issued a gag order against relaying scientific findings on climate change, essentially censoring scientific data that demonstrates man's impact on climate change or contribution to global warming. Now, the silver lining here is that this, uh, this does demonstrate that we are having an impact on that and that there are people that want to hide that, including especially our own President of the United States. For whatever reason, he has some kind of vested interest in uh, you know, doing things that are going to harm the environment and covering that fact up. You, uh, you brought up the protests, you know, not, not my president, all, all that stuff, right? What, one of the things I heard from the, uh, the people protesting Trump's presidency is this idea that he's worse than Hitler, right? Now, when I first heard that, I thought, that's ridiculous. I mean, there's nothing special about Trump, but he's not worse than Hitler. But when you think about it, even Hitler didn't knowingly do things that would destroy the planet, okay? That's something that Trump is doing, okay? Trump is knowingly contributing to the destruction of the planet 
and covering it up. And what, what I think this is about is uh, he wants, you know, instead of spending certain, uh, you know, funds on battling climate change, he wants to spend them on his wall. <laughs> right. I don't, I don't know that's ac actually how it works. That's, that's my, my speculation here. Okay. But, uh, you know, the point is, this is a guy that's knowingly contributing to the destruction of the planet and covering it up. Even Hitler didn't do that. Okay? Even Hitler didn't do that. So these people who are saying Trump is worse than Hitler, I used to think that was ridiculous, but now I see the light. They, they have converted me to their side. He is worse than Hitler. That is correct. <laughs> so while it is important to point out the fundamental overarching flaw in our present political system, as I have done in previous videos and will continue to do in future videos, it's also important to point out that Trump is not someone we should re-elect at the next election. By the way, at the next election, I will be old enough to run for president. Just saying. Now, it seemed you were interested in determining my political ideology. Is there a particular ideological label that I appropriate for myself? And, well, no, actually. I actually tend to avoid appropriating ideological labels altogether. Don't get me wrong, if I ever run for president, I'm going to have to pick one, right? That being said, if I had some kind of political authority, I would work on the implementation of a resource-based global economy, uh, which would actually be a way of transitioning us out of the current political paradigm into a completely new way of doing things. Now, for anyone who's never heard of the resource-based global economy, this is an idea first proposed by Jock Fresco, founder of the organization known as the Venus Project. Uh, basically, it's a system where we declare the Earth and its resources as the common heritage of all the world's people. And we automate all the jobs that nobody wants to do. So through the process of automation, we provide everyone in the world with access to clean air, food, clothing, shelter, medicine, education, transportation, entertainment, plumbing, and electricity, all without a price tag because, of course, you don't have to pay machines, right? So we're rendering the monetary system obsolete. Now, we, now to clarify, I don't expect to uh, just kind of drop the system that we have in place and all of a sudden switch to a system that doesn't use any money. No, we want to baby step our way to that system in a practical fashion, right? We want to have a good transition model, which I've of course already devised. I have talked about this in previous videos, although I've technically made some tweaks to it since then. It's like, oh, maybe it'd be better to do this instead of that, right? Just some little minor improvements. Right? Now, the resource-based global economy actually has the potential to do away with those problems of the world that I mentioned earlier. Those, those problems that the presidents are completely neglecting to, to solve. War, crime, poverty, starvation, slavery, overpopulation, pollution, racism, sexism, nationalism, classism, ageism, right? The resource-based global economy does have the potential to rid the world of these problems once and for all. Uh, now, don't get me wrong, it's totally possible that some of those problems, you know, we won't be able to rid with a, you know, get, get rid of with a resource-based global economy, but we can at least significantly diminish on their presence. We can make this world a significantly better place. Now, to answer your question, why am I asking Trump supporters, when was America great? What's the point I'm trying to make? Well, I think I already made my point in that video, because remember I was pointing out that if you're saying, let's make America great again, that seems to imply that it's not so great at the present time, but once upon a time it was in the past, and so there's some previous greatness we want to return to. And so I was pointing out that, you know, either you should be able to identify a specific time in the past when things were great, you should be able to say what was so great about it, either you should be able to do that or it sounds like you're just regurgitating some rhetoric from Donald Trump and you don't even know what you're talking about. Okay, uh, that, that, that was the point, right? So the fact that I'm not a Trump supporter and I'm calling out Trump supporters on their mindless regurgitation of Trump's rhetoric is not somehow simultaneously some kind of unspoken message that you should vote Democrat instead of Republican or that you should vote Hillary instead of Trump. Uh, 
I don't have any reason to think Hillary would have done any better than Trump. She might have done worse. I don't know, right? Now, there was some speculation that she might have brought about uh, nuclear warfare, which almost certainly would have been worse than what Trump's doing. Well, maybe, right? I don't know, right? I, I Hillary's not president, so I don't get to see what she's going to do. I do get to see what Trump's doing. And what he's doing is leading us down a path of our own destruction. Suffice it to say, Trump and Hillary should not have gotten anywhere near as far in the elections as they did. People just shouldn't vote for people like Trump and Hillary. We need to set higher standards for who we're going to allow into political positions of authority. We need to have more restrictions, okay? And so, you know, we need to ensure that whoever our next political leader is, is going to be someone that's going to apply the scientific method for social concern, okay? We need to make sure that it's someone that actually cares about taking care of the planet, uh, using alternative renewable resources instead of resources that are not only harmful for the environment, but we're burning through them faster than we can mine them anyway. The next president should be someone that takes the world's problems seriously and has an intention of doing something about it. Someone that wants to actually solve the world's problems rather than someone that wants to build a wall. That being said, at the present time, I am only half serious about the concept of uh, running for president myself. Truth is, I would prefer not to be president. I don't want to be that guy that everyone on the entire planet knows about. I don't want to be that guy that half the earth wants to kill just because I say something that they arbitrarily disagree with. Uh, I don't want to be president, but I might have to be. It's entirely possible I'm the one most qualified to do it. We'll see what happens. That's it for this video, guys. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and share it with other people. If you're interested in watching my future videos, please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And I will see you all in the next one. So have a good one, guys, and peace.